Hey, movie buffs. Today, let's dive into the 1943 film Girl Crazy. If you haven't seen it, you're in for a treat. There's a lot more to this classic than meets the eye. The first time you caught this flick, can you remember? Maybe it was a lazy Sunday afternoon or a cozy movie night. Regardless, it's got that timeless charm that keeps us coming back. Now, let's talk about the stellar cast. There's a classic Hollywood actor in there that steals the show. Who's your favorite? Drop a comment and let us know. But here's the hook. There's a ton of funny, shocking, and downright sad facts about Girl Crazy that you might not know. So, stick around for those juicy details. Before we get into that though, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film? Share your stories and memories in the comments below, we'd love to hear them. So, hit play, enjoy the ride, and remember to drop your thoughts below. Funny, shocking, sad, we want it all. And that's a wrap on the 1943 classic Girl Crazy. Until next time, keep those memories coming. A classic musical from the early 20th century underwent a transformation in the 1940s, bringing together two beloved young stars in a tale of putting on a show. Unlike its predecessor, this adaptation focused on a group of kids striving to make their mark in entertainment. The film showcased exceptional renditions of familiar songs, with one particular performance standing out for its emotional depth. Despite some deviations from the original plot, both versions of the movie offer unique viewing experiences, with each having its own merits. Among the musical comedies featuring the two stars, two stand out for their integration of music into the storyline. The talent of the young actors, especially in their musical performances, adds charm to the film. Additionally, the influence of a renowned choreographer is evident in the dance sequences, enhancing the overall entertainment value. This timeless piece of entertainment continues to captivate audiences with its music, comedy, and heartfelt performances. Cody College, the central setting of the 1943 movie, is inspired by various mining and technology institutions in the West. While the film places Cody in Arizona, the state known for the Seguro Cactus, its origins draw from the well-known Colorado School of Mines in Golden, Colorado. Initially slated to feature Eddie Cantor, the film took a different turn and marked the debut of Noreen Nash. Her introduction to the big screen adds a notable element to the production, offering audiences a glimpse into a promising career. In summary, Cody College's portrayal blends influences from Western mining and technology schools, prominently the Colorado School of Mines. Originally intended for Eddie Cantor, the film took a different path, showcasing the debut of Noreen Nash, a new face in the cinematic landscape. In Girl Crazy, Pauline Stafford delivers her final performance, marking the end of her career. Judy Garland's character, Ginger Gray, pays homage to Ginger Rogers, who originated the role on Broadway as Molly Gray. Rogers' name became immortalized in the character due to a memorable onstage mishap, where her co-star mistakenly called her Ginger instead of Molly, prompting laughter from the audience. Frances Ward makes her debut in the film, adding a fresh face to the cast. With these notable contributions, Girl Crazy showcases both seasoned talent bidding farewell and promising newcomers stepping into the limelight. After the lively I Got Rhythm number, there was a change in direction for the 1943 movie. Director Busby Berkeley left, with producer Arthur Freed blaming a clash with Judy Garland, but newer sources suggest money and time problems were the real reasons. Norman Torog took over as director. Also, a song called Ginger Deer by Roger Edens was recorded, but never made it into the film. Despite these issues, Girl Crazy made it onto the American Film Institute's list of 500 movies nominated for the top 100 funniest American movies. The movie had its challenges, with a change in director and a cut song, but it still managed to bring laughs to audiences. The musical number Bronco Busters, featuring Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland, Nancy Walker, and Chorus was pre-recorded but not filmed. This song can be heard on the soundtrack CD from Rhino and also on the Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland collection, a Warner Home video release. The story of the movie was adapted from a stage play and wasn't specifically tailored to capitalize on the talents of its stars. It was never one of their top favorites. Several of Judy Garland's musical numbers and other films were cut, including yours and mine in Broadway Melody of 1938, We Must Have Music in Ziegfeld Girl, Boys and Girls Like You, and Me and Meet Me in St. Louis, and a number with Gene Kelly and George Murphy in For Me and My Girl. A significant moment in a movie marked Evelyn Moriarty's start in the film industry. It got top marks from critics on Rotten Tomatoes, scoring 100%. In the climax, there's a scene where two characters, Ginger Gray and Danny Churchill Jr., are lifted high in the air by cowboys using only their feet, with guns firing all around them. 
Moriarty was really scared to do this, but her co-star encouraged her. Despite her fear, Moriarty's acting in this scene really impressed audiences worldwide, making her a new star in movies. Critics loved her bravery and talent, saying she was amazing in the film. Her role in that special moment with her co-star left a strong memory with audiences. That scene helped Moriarty become famous and set her up for a great career in acting. Irving Bacon, known for his roles in notable films, appeared in Girl Crazy alongside other Oscar Best Picture nominees like Bad Girl, I Am a Fugitive from a Chain Gang, and The Grapes of Wrath. The film made its television debut in Los Angeles before airing across various cities, including New York, Chicago, and San Francisco. Interestingly, a scene where Danny expresses his emotions during a birthday line might seem like an unplanned moment left in the final cut of the film. In the movie Girl Crazy, some interesting things stand out. Judy Garland, a famous actress, experienced a big loss at the Oscars in 1954, which caused a lot of talk. Mickey Rooney's old-fashioned watch in the film doesn't quite match the time period it's set in, showing a little mistake. Garland was well known for her singing talents, especially for songs like Over the Rainbow and The Man That Got Away. These details make Girl Crazy an important part of movie history. The musical play opened on Broadway with Ginger Rogers and Alan Kearns in the leads. Ethel Merman also starred, marking her Broadway debut in the I Got Rhythm number. Years later, the musical was revamped as Crazy For You, winning the 1992 Tony Award for Best Musical. Location shooting for the film took place in the Colorado desert near Palm Springs, California, although the saguaro cactus is not native to the area. To create the illusion of an Arizona setting, large cutouts of saguaros were used. Production faced challenges due to scorching temperatures, exceeding 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and dust stirred up by low-flying planes from a nearby World War II military airfield. In Italy, June Allison's films were dubbed by various actresses as she matured. Notably, she was once dubbed by Andrina Pagnani in Two Girls and a sailor released in Italy after the war. In the 1943 movie, a young Nancy Walker plays the wise cracking Polly. But she later gained TV fame as Rhoda Morgan Stern's mother in the Mary Tyler Moore show and Rhoda three decades later. Additionally, it marked the final film appearance of Julia Griffith. The movie faced budgetary challenges, overshooting by $323,000 due in part to Busby Berkeley's removal and subsequent shutdown of production. Despite this, it proved to be one of the most profitable of Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney's musical collaborations, breaking in three $770,000 upon its initial release. In the realm of cinema, bidding farewell is an inevitable part of an actor's journey. Recently, three talented actresses took their final bow in a memorable production. Each of these actresses had made significant contributions to the silver screen, leaving an impact on audiences with their performances. The movie they starred in served as a poignant conclusion to their acting careers, showcasing their skills one last time before they exited the cinematic stage. As the final credits rolled, it marked the end of an era for these remarkable individuals whose talents will be remembered long after the lights dim on their careers. In the colorful history of Hollywood, there's a fascinating tale of a movie that left a mark on the industry even though its stars weren't always showered with awards. Back in 1943, a film brought laughter and music to audiences, later inspiring a remake in 1965. The remake featured notable singers like Connie Francis and a popular group, Herman's Hermits. The leading lady of the original film, who later starred in another significant production after marrying a director, found herself among a group of talented actresses who, despite their acclaimed performances, never received Oscar nominations. One such actress, who shone in a different comedy musical film, earned a Golden Globe, but remained absent from the Oscar nominee list. Alongside her were other brilliant actresses like Ethel Merman, Marilyn Monroe, and more, who faced a similar fate in the award circuit. Despite the applause and recognition, these women, including the stars of that memorable movie, faced an irony in their career's Golden Globe success without the coveted Oscar nod. Their story adds a unique chapter to Hollywood's history of accolades. During the release of the 1943 film, amidst wartime austerity measures, the cinema served as an escape for Americans, including U.S. troops, offering extravagant costumes, lively dance numbers, and beloved songs. Among the college students discussing a telegram was Peter Lawford. The grand finale, I Got Rhythm, was one of the first scenes filmed, but its demanding choreography led to the dismissal of director Busby Berkeley. Judy Garland, feeling overwhelmed, demanded his replacement, with Mickey Rooney supporting her. Norman Torog replaced Berkeley, offering a more relaxed approach. 
Set against the backdrop of Cody College, the movie introduces viewers to a curious mix-up in its depiction of flora. While the signs guiding Mickey Rooney's character feature the organ pipe and saguaro cactus plants, his journey unfolds amidst Joshua trees native to the Mojave Desert in Southern California. However, beyond the botanical inconsistencies lies a cast enigma. Numerous listed members failed to make their mark in the film. Alphonse Mardell, Barbara Bedford, Sarah Edwards, Harry C. Bradley, Speck O'Donnell, Sidney Miller, and the entire ensemble of committee women remain elusive, either absent or unidentifiable in their designated roles. Intriguingly, the discrepancy between the expected and the actual cast adds a layer of mystery to the movie's production. As viewers follow Mickey Rooney through the twists of Cody College, they might unknowingly be witnessing the silent presence of absent characters, each with their designated roles that never materialized on screen. These peculiarities, be they botanical or casting related, contribute a distinctive touch to the narrative of Girl Crazy, offering audiences an unexpected element and an otherwise straightforward plot. In a surprising turn of events, tragedy struck the cast of a 1943 musical comedy after filming wrapped up. One of the actors, despite a promising career, met an untimely demise, leaving behind a potential for so much more. As the film continues to be celebrated for its role in the cinematic landscape, this sad fact serves as a reminder of the fleeting nature of life in the entertainment industry. The movie, directed by a well-known filmmaker, boasts a star-studded cast with a lead role played by the talented Judy Garland. The plot revolves around a New Yorker sent to a Western university to change his ways, unfolding with humor and charm amidst catchy tunes and lively dance numbers. Despite facing challenges during production, including casting disputes and budgetary constraints, the dedication of the cast and crew prevailed, resulting in a beloved classic that entertains audiences to this day. Judy Garland's performance solidified her status as a leading lady in Hollywood. With her undeniable talent and charismatic presence, she captivated audiences in every scene. Her rendition of a notable song remains a highlight, showcasing her vocal skills and emotional depth. In addition to Garland's stellar performance, the supporting cast made memorable contributions. From comedic antics to endearing charm, each actor brought something unique to the table, contributing to the film's overall success. As the credits roll on this 1943 movie, it's evident that the production holds a special place in the hearts of audiences worldwide. With catchy tunes, lively dance numbers, and unforgettable performances, it continues to stand the test of time, reminding us of the magic of classic Hollywood cinema.